The program quantified movements of the arms, tracking how the arms work together in synchrony, suggesting direction from the brain, or asynchronously, suggesting independent decision-making in each appendage. And they found that in the flow of information from the environment to the octopus, some information bypasses the central brain entirely. The suckers in arms can, in a way, think for themselves, allowing the octopus to analyze its environment extremely quickly and react with matching speed. Along with skin that can perceive and change color on its own, the relationship between brain and body in the octopus is full of blurred lines. And on top of this unusual neural layout and strange body autonomy, cephalopods are smart, extremely smart. And this is really what gives the octopus its alien-like status. They are so far from any other intelligent life on the tree of evolution, but still compete with vertebrates in their raw cognitive ability. Evolution invented intelligent life not once, but twice, in two completely different ways. In the evolutionary tree of life, we sit upon the branch of mammals. Nearby are the fish, reptiles, birds, and amphibians, the other members of the larger classification of vertebrates. This group is where we see all of the intelligent life we normally think of. Humans, primates, dogs, cats, dolphins, and some birds. When we collect these animals and trace back to our common ancestor, it was likely a lizard-like animal that lived around 320 million years ago. Like us, this animal would have had a backbone, four limbs, a head, and a skeleton. It would have walked around, well adapted to land, and had a well-developed central nervous system. But to find where we split from the octopus, we have to travel much further down the branches, to around 600 million years ago. The creature we find there is a simple, flat worm. It had an extremely basic nervous system, and no inklings of what we would consider intelligence. As the evolutionary tree branched and diverged, intelligence blossomed on our branch of vertebrates and totally separately in the cephalopods. And with the cephalopods evolving before any of the intelligent vertebrates, it's likely that they were the first intelligent animals that appeared on Earth. But what actually is intelligence? How can we identify or even measure such a thing in an animal so different from us?